Hey everybody, welcome to Big Guy Builds. I'm John Hobbs and we're here to help you grow as furniture builders so you can enhance the beauty and function of your living space. Special welcome, this is our first ever vlog style video. We plan to do these periodically just to kind of cover some woodworking topics that may not fit into a project build video very well um, or to maybe just kind of blather on about this, that, the other thing. Uh, in fact, let's just go ahead and dub these Big Guy Blather. So welcome to your first ever Big Guy Blather. This particular installment is intended to be a supplement to our circular saw guide rail build video. If you haven't seen that, what are you waiting for? Get on over, take a look at that, hurry on back. Um, this is going to make a lot more sense to you if you've seen that already. What we're going to cover here is some of our design and dimension decisions that went into uh, what we decided to build in that video there. So let's get started. One of the first design considerations we're going to talk about is the thickness of the material we used to build our guide rail. Um, if you saw the build video, you know we used half-inch plywood. Um, some of the things to consider here is the maximum depth of cut of your saw. This saw, per specs, uh, has a maximum depth of cut of two and a half inches. So by using a half-inch material here for the base plate, we're going to actually reduce that maximum depth of cut by half an inch, so it's only going to be two inches. Now, if you're cutting mostly sheet goods that max out at three quarters of an inch thick, probably not going to be a problem, especially if you're using a full seven and a quarter inch saw like this one is. If you have a smaller saw, like a trim saw, where it's got limited depth of cut to begin with, that may begin to become a problem. So you may want to go down to a quarter, in it, a quarter of an inch material. Um, you could even go to some eighth of an inch hardboard if you like. Although at that point, things are going to get a little floppy and a little flimsy, and this, you're not probably not going to be able to use screws to connect the two pieces. Um, but if you're easy on your equipment, that could work, and it would maximize the depth of cut while still uh, enjoying the benefits of a guide rail. The other area where thickness material comes into effect um, is on this guide strip itself. Um, if you look in here, you can see um, at a half an inch, uh, the, the motor of my circular saw is right down on top of my guide strip. So I'm not quite at the maximum depth of the saw and I can't go any deeper because this is because of this interference. So um, another thing to consider if your motor is going to butt up against your, your guide strip, you may want to go with thinner material on your guide strip as well as on your base. Um, if you're looking at maximizing the depth of cut of your saw while using your guide rail. Okay, so here's another consideration to determine the width of your guide strip. Uh, as you can see here, I've got it clamped up and you can tell that there's not enough clearance for my saw to slide on by the clamp. Now clamps like these, um, you know, one solution is I could just flip it over and that would give me a little more clearance. Um, but even if I do that, I'm still going to have potentially some clearance issues. So I could either switch to lower profile clamps, which would help, um, or I can increase the width of my guide strip, which is, the, and then increase the width of the base the same amount. And then now my clamping area is going to move over to the left, and that will open up some space for the motor of my saw to slide by my clamps. Also, your, your clamps are going to determine how much width you want here in this clamp area. Um, you can measure the pads or the jaws in your particular clamps. Um, we went with the hand method that you saw in the guide video or the build video. Um, this wound up to be about two and a half inches. Um, you can add or subtract that as you need depending on what your clamps and your saw and how they all fit and work together. In our build video we mentioned that we were making our guide rail 52 inches long and we said that was a good size for ripping across a standard four foot by eight foot sheet of plywood and those of you who are good with math know that that means it's uh, that's 48 inches wide so you might be wondering why we added a few extra inches to our guide rail well when you go to start up your saw you do not want your blade in contact with your cut piece in which case this is that MDF on the bottom here um, it can bind up or it could kick on you and cause damage to your workpiece and or your person, so that's not good. So <clears throat> if we have the guide rail at the very end of our workpiece like we do here and we pull the blade back a little bit so it's not in contact, then when we come around here, 
you will see that we don't have a whole lot of contact between the base plate of our saw and our guide strip. And what that means is it's very easy to let your saw to skew um, at the beginning of your cut. And so that makes it really hard to get a nice straight cut from the beginning. Okay, so by adding a few inches to the length of our guide rail, making it 52 inches, not 48 inches, now we have a little bit of a, an extra runway here on the edge of our workpiece. So now if we get this <coughs> circular saw on here and we leave it just a little bit shy of our workpiece, now when we come around to look over here, you can see we have tons of contact between the base plate of the saw and our guide strip. So now when we start it up and we begin to make that cut, we're highly unlikely that the saw is going to skew it all and we'll get a nice clean cut from the very beginning. In woodworking it's impossible to ever get away from math completely, but if you can reduce the amount of math you do uh, and reduce the amount of memory, think, dimensions that you have to remember, um, the fewer mistakes you're going to make. So that's why in our build video you saw us do a no math, no measure method of determining the width of our base plate. Now we realize some of you guys and gals out there uh, like to be a little more precise and you want to do the measurement and you want to do the math and be as precise as you can be. So here's how you can do that. The critical measurement here is the distance between your blade and then this edge of your circular saw's base plate. That correlates to this distance here and you saw during the calibration um, you know we got that down to be very exact because we create we start out with our base plate just a little bit extra wide. When you make, take this measurement you do not want to measure from the inner part of the the saw blade here, the body, that's typically thinner and narrower than the teeth so you will not get an accurate measure going from there. So you definitely want to measure from the teeth. To take this measurement you want to find a tooth that is leaning towards this edge of your base plate because that's going to be where that edge, the inner edge of that cut is going to be. So that's the distance you really want. So when you take that measurement we get about three and seven eighths. After you've determined how wide your your guide strip is going to be, you add that measurement. We went with two inches, it's kind of arbitrary. Um, it's wide enough that we can put screws in it without it splitting. Um, it's just a really good distance for us. Uh, as you saw earlier, there are other considerations for determining how wide you may want that to be. So for us it was two inches, so we have three and seven eighths, plus two is five and seven eighths. Then we come to this clamping area back here. Again, if you looked at our build video, we just kind of used the width of our hand as an arbitrary measure. Uh, it worked out to be about two and a half inches wide. So you add those three numbers together, and that's how wide your base plate is going to end up. I uh, still strongly recommend that if you do the measure and math method, that you do add a little extra, at least a quarter to half an inch out here, and then do the calibration step that we did in the build video. Um, that will get this dimension right on the money down to the thousandth of an inch for this blade and this saw. Well there you go. Hopefully we provided you with some insight into our decisions as to the dimensions and design of our guide rail. We also hope that we've provided you with the tools that you can use to adapt the design to your needs so that it'll fit your saw, your clamps, and the materials you're going to be using and that you can get a great result. So until next time, I'm John Hobbs and this has been Big Guy Blather.